Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, today we will talk about electromagnetic induction and the Faraday's law, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Uh, this lecture is part of the course. The course is called Physics for Teens. Um, it's presented on unizor.com website. Uh, if you found this lecture on, on YouTube or somewhere else, I suggest you to rather go to the website because the website unizor.com contains the course basically, so, uh, which means all the lectures and every lecture has a very detailed notes, basically like a textbook, and there are exams for you to self-check, uh, or maybe your supervisor can check it, or teacher, um, and the site is completely free, and there are no advertisement, no, no strings attached, so um, it's much better to look at the whole course actually and to know what exactly you might you might need or take the whole course actually um, on the same website you can find the prerequisite course called math for teens i do consider the mathematics is very important for physics and um, for instance in this lecture i will also use some mathematics some calculus for instance just a little bit, but still, whatever the level is, mass is important for physics. Okay, back to business. Um, now, before going into electromagnetic induction and Faraday's law, I would like to very briefly repeat what we have learned about interaction between uh, magnetic force and uh, electric current. Basically, most important thing is so-called Lorentz force. If you have magnetic field, and I will uh, represent the magnetic field with magnetic lines, and um, you have an electron or any other uh, charged particle moving. For simplicity, we will always use perpendicular direction. Um, then there is an interaction between the electrically charged particle and the magnetic field, magnetic field will uh, generate a force which is acting perpendicularly to both direction of magnetic lines and the uh, trajectory of the charged particle. In this case, the perpendicular to these both, they are in the plane of this uh, board, which which means that perpendicular to both will be perpendicular to the whole board. So it's either this direction or that direction, depending on what exactly is uh, the particle. If it's positively charged, it's one direction. If it's neg negatively, it's another direction. But anyway, every uh, particle will have a force in this particular direction, either this way or that way. That's the Lorentz force. Now, based on this, we um, were talking about the force uh, with which magnetic field um, uh, exerts onto the wire with the current. So if this is not just a particle but a wire and there is an electricity, electric current running in it, well, what does it mean? Well, it means that there are a lot of electrons actually going along this wire in one direction, which, is, which means on every electron uh, there is a force from the magnetic field and again it's directed perpendicular to the direction of the wire um, and if it acts on every electron it basically acts on an entire wire. So entire wire experiences the force in this or this direction depending on the direction of the electricity. And there is the rule of right hand, which basically helps to determine which direction, but that doesn't really matter right now. What matter is there is a Lorentz force between magnetic field and every charged particle or the wire with electric current in it. Okay, now let me remind you how we um, quantitatively characterized that thing. Now. Um, we have introduced basically the equation which quantitatively uh, defines this force 
uh, as um, the product of the current which is running in the wire lengths and intensity of the magnetic field. Well, I use the plane multiplication here because I am assuming the perpendicularity. In the vector form, it will be a little bit more uh, involved. It will be I as a vector. L means length of the wire. And B should be a vector product here. So B is a vector in this direction. I is a vector, in this case, on this particular picture, in this direction, perpendicularly to the um, lines of the magnetic field. So F is the force which is a, a vector product of um, current vector times the length of the, uh, of, of the wire. Well, obviously it should be multiplied by length of the wire because force is acting on every electron inside the wire. So the longer the wire, the greater the force will be. So that's why it's proportional. And it's proportional to I, which is basically the speed of electrons, right? Current is um, amount of electricity per unit of time. That that's that's the speed of moving of uh, electricity, and the B is um, the um, the uh, intensity of the magnetic field. Basically, this is how we defined in the very beginning what is the intensity of, of magnetic field. If the length is equal to one meter, and uh, current is equal to 1 ampere, which means 1 coulomb per second, and the F is equal to 1 newton, then we are saying that the intensity is equal to 1 tesla. In any case, so this is defined. Now, so this is for the piece of the wire, actually. Obviously, we can modify this uh, per particular single electrically, electrically charged um, particle, um, how it can be done. Well, let's say you have a particle, only one particle, with a charge Q. Well, if it's an electron, if it's the charge of electron. Now, if it's only one particle moving, what is I? I is Q divided by T. Now, if it's moving with a speed V, then the L is equal to V times T, right? So the whole current of the length L will be covered in time t, and if V is the speed, then the length of the wire is speed times uh, time. And at the same time, if the same charge Q during the time t covers the whole length, it means that Q divided by t is the current, which means the F in this case is equal to uh, Q divided by t times V times T times B. I'm using this formula for perpendicular direction because if perpendicular then this multiplication means times sine of the angle, if you remember the vector product and sine of the 90 degrees one. So that means we have Q, V, B. So this is the formula for one particular uh, charged particle. And this is for um, the wire of the length L. And again, we're talking about perpendicular direction, perpendicular direction of the wire, or perpendicular direction of the charged particle relative to um, lines of magnetic field. Also, let me talk about terminology which we will be using. We will talking about we will be talking about something like crossing magnetic field lines. What, what does it actually mean? I mean, there are no magnetic field lines. I mean, it's our representation of the magnetic field. Well, in this particular case, for instance, if a charged particle is moving across magnetic field lines, it means that the force, magnetic force, is actually, um, if, if, if it's, if it's a magnetically charged, then it will be at either attracted in this direction or repelled in this direction. That's what these magnetic field lines are. And usually the density of these lines characterizes the strength of the magnetic field, the intensity B. And when we're talking about crossing, then I, will, I, I might actually use 
the more magnetic lines we cross, let's say, during a certain period of time, what does it mean? It means actually that the stronger magnetic field is, because the strength of the magnetic field is represented with magnetic lines. And uh, uh, using the language of magnetic lines helps to determine the direction of the magnetic field. So that's why we're using this kind of a terminology. So crossing magnetic lines perpendicularly, it means that, well, there are certain um, forces uh, of the magnetic field uh, which act on other magnets, and these are direction of these forces. And the electrical forces are perpendicular to this. That's what basically it means. Okay, so this is preambula, which means I just want you to understand in particular this formula, or rather this formula, because we will use everything in a perpendicular direction for simplicity, because it will be very, very important for understanding the electromotive induction. Now, uh, okay, so what happened in this particular case when we have a wire with um, electric current running in it and it causes basically the force and the force is moving the wire um, in this direction right so this is the wire this is magnetic force let's say this is north and this is south and this is i then the force would be perpendicular to I and to magnetic field lines. Okay. So what happens in this case is the following. Movement of the electrons inside the wire, which means the current, electric current, causes uh, the movement of the entire wire perpendicularly to both directions. <coughs> directions of magnetic field and direction of the of the current now usually in nature everything is symmetrical in harmony so to speak so my question is if current in the wire in the magnetic field causes the force and movement of the entire wire can it be reversed? What if I will move the entire wire? Will it cause the current? So that's how we will try to basically make this kind of inverse logic. And this is what actually the person by the name Faraday did. And that's how he uncovered that, yes, there is such a connection, there is such a symmetry, in, 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 if you wish. Current in the magnetic field causes the movement of the wire. But now he has discovered that movement of the wire has, this, uh, ha has caused actually the uh, appearance of the current inside the wire, basically generating the electricity. Now, that's very important because this is exactly how we generate electricity from mechanical movement. Movement of the wire is mechanical and it generates electricity in this wire. That's the electromagnetic uh, property of the thing. And that's how we use, basically, because of this discovery, we have the electricity around us. So that's, where <laughs> that's why it's very important. Okay, so let's just... Um, that, uh, one more thing I forgot to tell. Existence of the wire, uh, of the current in the wire, what does it mean? Well, it means that there is certain voltage actually, right, on the ends of this wire. So, if there is a difference in potential, th there is a difference in potential or voltage or electromagnetic uh, or elect um, electromotive force, we will use electromotive force. So, Voltage and electromotive force basically are the same thing. Um, and uh, so what I'm saying is that uh, current inside this wire means that there is some kind of a voltage on its ends or electromotive force. If we are talking about generating the current, 
which means basically we are forcing the charges inside, electrons, to move to one side of the wire. That means we're generating electromotive force. So that's the language kind of which I will be using. If the wire is somehow connected and there is a loop closed circuit, then there will be movement of the electrons all the time. But if there is none, there is still a difference in potential which might actually be generated. And that's what we're talking about. What's important is we're generating the EMF, the voltage, the electromotive force uh, inside the moving wire. Okay, now we will talk about a concrete experiment. And I will use a different picture. In this case, my force is perpendicular to the board. I will change the picture in such a way that magnetic lines will be perpendicular so the force will be um, along the board and it will be better visible. Okay. So experiment is basically exactly the same as before. Now let's consider my magnetic field are directed perpendicular to uh, the board. So let's say my north pole is here, my south pole is behind the board. So magnetic field lines usually are uh, represented as well, if you wish it can be viewed as an arrow if you view from, from the tail versus this representation of the arrow if you look uh, from the head. But in this case we are looking uh, from the tail. So magnetic north pole is uh, on this side of the board, magnetic south on that side of the board. Okay, now what we do is we will have a closed circuit which contains two rails, some kind of a resistor uh, connecting on this side and on this side we will have some kind of a rod which can this is a metal rod which is moving parallel to itself on these rails so it's moving this way and I suggest that we will move it this way with a speed V so that's basically the setup of the experiment. Now we have the movement uh, of the rod. We have magnetic lines. And let's see what happens. Why do we have this generation of electricity? Well, everything is related to Lorentz force. Let's just think about it. Inside of this metal rod, there are electrons. Now, electrons are connected, they're rotating around atoms. Usually, um, in metals at least, around um, the atom the electrons are rotating in different orbits and the outer orbit is less, electrons on outer orbit is less attached to the nuclei. Nuclei are more or less stable inside the, inside the material, inside the metal. Let's say it's copper. Um, but uh, electrons on the outside, they are not as strongly connected. And there are some free electrons. One or two electrons of each atom are, well, they can actually move relatively free. They can jump from one atom to another electron. From that atom maybe uh, goes back to the first one. So there are some we will call it free electrons. It's not really free, but they're very loosely attached to their atoms. And the strong force can actually move them into one or another direction, if there is a strong force, electro electrostatic force or some, some other force. So what happens here? Well, look at this. 
we are moving the whole rod, right? Which means we are moving with this rod, we are moving all the electrons inside, all the atoms actually, nuclei and electrons, etc. Well, and we know that if we are moving electrically charged particle inside the magnetic field, and this is magnetic field, and we are moving across magnetic field lines, which means perpendicularly to uh, lines. So every electron right now is moving where? This direction. Now magnetic field is this direction, so it's perpendicular. There is a Lorentz force which basically acts on each electron. Well, some electrons are relatively attached to their atoms, but the free electrons are not that much attached, right? So Lorentz force might actually kick them out from their orbits and move where? Well, let's think about it. Lorentz force is always perpendicular to magnetic field lines and perpendicular to trajectory. Trajectory is this way. Lines, magnetic lines are this way. So what's the perpendicular to both? Well, that's the direction of the rod itself. The rod is perpendicular to the direction of each electron inside it and it's perpendicular to magnetic field lines here. So electrons will move in the rod into what, one of two directions depending on the direction of movement uh, of the rod and uh, direction of the magnetic field lines. Now in this particular case let me just think about it. It's a, a right hand rule so I think that I have to put my hand like this so magnetic field lines are going in, so into, the, into the hand the thumb goes towards the direction of the movement of electrons so the electrons will move up so the electrons will move within the rod from each place where they are towards this end and now since it's connected they will start rotating this is the circuit this is a closed circuit and that's what basically electric current is so as long as we are moving our rod the Lorentz force which is acting on every electron will push these electrons here and they will uh, move around the closed circuit and continue moving so the current exists as long as we are moving the rod and this is something which was discovered by Faraday and called electromagnetic induction. We are generating the current in this particular rod by moving it perpendicularly to the lines of magnetic field. Um, so the movement should be perpendicular and the wire itself should be stretched perpendicularly. So that's the case which we are talking about right now. Now, let's try to quantify what we are doing right now. Uh, let's consider that because of our movement, there is a current I generated in, in this circuit. Now, L is the length of this wire, and um, Let's call this distance uh, x, because we are moving, so x is basically function of t, right, uh, of the time, since we are moving, and v is dx of t by dt, the first derivative. Speed is the first derivative of the um, <coughs> uh, of the length which we are covering. Okay, so B is given, that's the magnetic um, field intensity. Consider that we are generating I. Now, what happens? Well, as we talked about before, um, the Lorentz force which is acting on every electron and forces to move it this way this uh, generates the electric current, so electric current moves this way. 
which means that there is an elect the, the Lorentz force which is acting on the entire wire. Now, what happens in this particular case? Well, in this particular case, let's just think about it. My uh, current is this direction. Now we are talking about an entire um, current in the field. My magnetic field are this direction. So the Lorentz force on an entire wire, an entire rod, whatever, is acting perpendicularly to both. Perpendicular to this direction and perpendicular to this direction. And what is this? Well, that's this direction. But let's think about what's, what's exactly a direction. My field comes into this. My electrons now are coming this way, which means my force is my Lorentz force is directed this way. So when we are moving our rod with a constant speed v, we have to actually work. We are working against the Lorentz force. So the Lorentz force on one hand forces the electrons to go this way, but as soon as they go this way, the Lorentz force moves the whole, well, it, it's, a, it's not moving, we are moving, but there is a force which is actually directed against the movement. Well, on one hand, you obviously understand that that's exactly how it must be, because if the force is directed in, in a different direction, not against our movement, then it will help us, which means we will have free energy. We will just move our rod, just push it a little bit in one direction, and then the Lorentz force will start moving it further and further and further and faster and faster and faster, right? No such luck, no free energy. There is a law of conservation of energy. So, we are generating electricity, but we must do some work against this force. So the force is equal to this one, which means our work must be equal to this. So we are working by pushing our rod this way. Okay. Now, what happens with energy which we are spending? Well, we can say that it's generating the electricity. And where is this energy now? Well, we have this resistor, and resistor actually is he heating up electricity is converted into heat and that's that's what what happens so we know how energy is well consumed by electric circuit if you remember it's i times u times um t times t so it, i times u is a power w is work so power times um times time is is work now, if you remember this, you definitely have to go to um, electricity part uh, of, 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 this, of, this, of this course, because that's covered. So this is the work which electric current in a loop is exerting. Exerting, exerting, sorry, exerting. Okay, so we are spending certain amount of work uh, by moving with a constant speed against this particular force. And this amount of work is converted eventually in heating of this resistor. Right? So that's what's happening. Now, okay, so we can basically make some kind of an equation. The work with which this force Let's say we are moving um, by a certain distance, dx. So what's that differential, right? Differential. So what is the work which Lorentz force is doing, which we have to overcome, which means we are doing exactly the same um, work, basically pushing the rod in this direction. Well, that's the force, which is this one, uh, times 
uh, distance, right? So it's I times L times B times DX. So this is the work which we actually have to perform. And because of that work, there is a current I and there is a difference in electric potential, there is a voltage, there is an electromotive force between these points. So that should be equal to I times U times time. Time is GT. That's during infinitesimally small amount of time. We are moving the rod by infinitesimally, infinitesimally um, short distance parallel to itself. So this is our equation from which we derive very simply dx we will and dt, dt will divide to, to, to dx we will have v i will go out and what we will have we will have that l times v times v v is dx d divided by by, by dt is equal to u. So this is a voltage which is generated, the EMF, the electromotive force, and it's generated by moving our rod of the length L, which is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines, moving it perpendicularly once again to magnetic field lines with a speed v, where B is um, the intensity of the magnetic field. Now, let's think about this formula a little bit. It's not the final formula. <coughs> it's almost final. What is L times V? Well, this is how it was done, right? This is L, this is V, which is dx by dt. So if this is dx, L times dx is area. So, when we are talking about L times dx divided by dt, which is this one, L times v, v is dx by dt, so what is this? This is the area of by dt. So we can change this formula into b times the area of dt. Well, it is area indeed, because the longer the rod, the more magnetic lines we will swipe across when we are moving it, right? <coughs> so, it's very important actually, because let's just think about in this particular case, B is a constant. So I can actually say that this is equal to D B times A divided by DT, which is speed of <coughs> speed of changing the B times A. So if B intensity times the area, in this case area is increasing, so B times A is obviously increasing. So B times A, the uh, intensity of the magnetic, law, uh, magnetic field times the area which are actually encompassing certain area of the field. You see, with this wireframe, we are cutting certain um, area from the magnetic field. And we are multiplying this area by um, the strength of the field, the intensity of the field. Now this thing is called magnetic flux. So 
So B times A is a magnetic flux. Now let's think about what is magnetic flux. Well, magnetic flux can be basically visualized as the number of magnetic field lines per the particular within a particular area, right? We're talking about magnetic field lines as a representation of strengths of intensity of the magnetic lines, right? Of, of magnetic field. So that's why we can say that this multiplication area times the strengths of magnetic field lines or density of the magnetic field lines, if you wish, is the flux. That's the, when it's flowing, the magnetic en energy is flowing through this particular area. So if the area is changing, as in our case, for instance, it's expanding, we are changing the magnetic flux through this um, frame. Well, there are many different ways we can change the magnetic flux. This is one of them. So if my um, frame is perpendicular to magnetic field lines, we can just expand the area. Or we can do it differently. If this is, mag if this is magnetic field lines and this is my area, I can turn it. And as you see, the amount uh, of uh, energy, magnetic energy, the number of magnetic lines actually which are going through the same contour but turned at the angle is changing. So we are changing the flux, magnetic flux. And that also is basically equivalent to shortening our... So instead of turning it this way, we can just shorten it and again it will be exactly the same effect. So expanding or shortening of the magnetic uh, of the of the wire loop is basically the same thing as turning it in such a way or in, a, or in such or another way. And that's exactly what I will be talking during the um, some for the next lecture probably, um, where I will explain how we'll really generate the electricity because it's kind of a awkward way to generate by moving some rod. There is a better way, basically, but it means exactly the same. We are changing magnetic flux. So magnetic flux, when it's changed, and this is the, some kind of a frame, a contour, or whatever you want, <coughs> it generates electricity inside this um, circuit. And this is basically the Faraday's law that electromotive force generated is equal to speed of changing of the magnetic um, flux through this particular closed circuit. So closed circuit gives you some kind of an area and as long as this area changing, maybe expanding, maybe turning, turning will be the next lecture, then there is an electricity generated in this um, circuit. This is the Faraday's law. And this is extremely important for generating electricity which we are using. Because that's how it's generated, basically. Okay, that's it for today. I do suggest you to read um, the notes for this lecture. So you go to unizor.com to um, Physics for Teens course, there is electromagnetism uh, part, and uh, that's the first lecture in electromagnetic induction. Thank you very much, and good luck.